good morning to everyone present here uh, respected director seats respected dean spgs and uh, uh, respected uh, guest speaker and external examiner uh, uh, dr d vijay principal scientist from ir new delhi and uh, uh, other uh, our professors and uh, other colleagues uh, associate professors uh, assistant professors and uh, students friends uh, both online and offline uh, good morning uh to everyone present here both online and offline um sir uh, actually uh, our tnau tamil nadu agriculture university is organizing so many programs to the benefit of the students one of such a program is this type of guest lecture and uh, the able guidance of our honorable vice chancellor madam and dean uh, post graduate studies we are organizing so many program to the students uh, for likewise uh, like uh, endowment lecture adjunct faculty lecture and other uh, developing entrepreneurial skill for the students so so many programs uh, they are organizing uh, and at the guidance of uh, post graduate studies uh, dean and uh, one such lecture is uh, we are calling the external examiner uh, inviting external examiner for deliver, deliver the guest lecture so we are happy to have you here sir uh, uh, to the t welcome to the tnau tamil nadu agriculture university particular to the department of seed science and technology and uh, one more thing is uh, we already organized uh, this year alone we have organized 10 10 guest lectures in our in our cd department alone we have organized for the past 8 months and out of this 10 three uh, two is endowment lecture and three is we organized lectures uh, guest lecture series uh, inviting persons from abroad like uh, steven broadford and alison powell Uh, and uh, dr deadlani our chairman also visited here for uh, delivering endowment lecture and uh, three people from iri uh, sudipta bas and yourself dr deadlani they visited this year alone for uh, uh, delivering lectures and uh, interact with the students so in that line uh, we are happy to receive you here sir today so my whole heartedly welcome you for this uh, um, bye bye and guest lecture sir we are happy and uh, another thing is we are also planning to start uh, another lecture series inviting our uh, dss tanimli uh, working uh, outside now the icr or uh, in state agriculture ministers so we are also having and we, i am contacting uh, those personnel also for delivering this type of lecture sir uh, to gain the knowledge from our dss tanimli and that will be useful for both students and faculty so today we are having uh, this uh, your topic is related to dormancy it is more scientific and very interesting topic to the students dormancy and its regulations um uh, so uh, we whole heartedly on behalf of seed science and technology and the seed center i am welcoming you and all the both uh, offline and online participant I, i am welcoming for this guest lecture sir thank you and i thank our dean spgs and madam uh, to uh, create this opportunity for uh, store both the students and faculty thank you and welcome you one and all thank you for the opportunity thank you madam next you would like to request our uh, respected director seat center tna coimbatore to deliver introductory address morning one and all dr n sendil dean school uh, school of post graduate studies then our uh, special guest dr vijay principal scientist division of seed science and technology icr iri new delhi Uh, Dr V Manon Mani Professor and Head Department of Seed Science and Technology Dr S Kavita PG Coordinator Department of Seed Science and Technology uh, all the scientists of Seed Center and uh, Department of Seed Science and Technology other scientists who have joined offline and my dear students I am happy to stand before you uh, to offer the introductory ad- address uh, regarding the guest lecture which has to be which will which will be delivered by uh, Dr uh, Vijay um let me first introduce him to you um his experience uh service all those things so uh dr d vijay is presently working as principal scientist in division of seed science and technology iri new delhi as our professor and head said he is the third person to visit 
our department uh, to offer a guest lecture as well as to be the external examiner of the PG thesis viva, PhD thesis viva. So basically, sir hails from Andhra Pradesh uh, state. So uh, today also Andhra Pradesh or Telangana, sir? Andhra Pradesh only, very good. <laughs> so he obtained his bachelor's degree from Acharya NG Ranga Agricultural University, Hyderabad and completed his master's and doctoral degrees from IRI New Delhi. He has won gold medals bo both during his graduate and doctoral degrees. He has more than 18 years of experience uh, in multiple organizations. So it is very nice to see the places in which he has worked. So he has worked in uh, International Plant Genetic Research Institute, uh, India office. Then uh, he has worked in Regional Agricultural Research Station uh, of Angrao. Then uh, he has shifted uh, to ICR as senior scientist at uh, uh, IGFRI uh, Jansi and later to IRI New Delhi and he is continuing as the principal scientist over there. So during uh, these years, during a brief period actually he has also headed the research station and worked as a zonal, zonal uh, seed, seed production officer and nodal officer seeds. So he has authored 150 publications, including 33 peer-reviewed articles in national and international journals. He has also authored 11 book chapters and three books. So his area of specialization is seed physiology, uh, mainly seed dormancy, vigor, and storage uh, in legumes and cereals, including grasses. So the most important uh, thing which um, I appreciate this. Uh, during his free time, he is interested in gaining familiarity with macro photography. Uh, so I think uh, um, while discussing about the seed uh, dormancy, you can also give some insights into your hobby also, sir. That will be a very uh, interesting thing, I think. And with respect to the topic in which sir is going to dull, uh, that is seed dormancy and its regulation. Um, I should say that uh, I am also interested in the same area. Um, some 10-15 years back uh, when we started the career, we saw dormancy as a, a very problematic one. So the nursery people uh, are very um, uh, anxious that the dormancy extends, especially in tree seeds like teak, like melia. If you sow the seeds, you'll have to wait up to six months to get all the seedlings to germinate. So there is sporadic uh, there is uh, protracted irregular irregular germination, especially in the case of uh, tree seeds. So we there is there is lots of research going on. Uh, I don't know, especially in teak. So people are working, trying to work hard to overcome dormancy in teak. So first of all, what are the physiological reasons behind the uh, dormancy of any particular species is very important. Only when you come to know about the physiological impediment, then you will be able to work out uh, the treatments that can overcome the dormancy. So in the case of teak and melia, tree seeds, which, which I was working simultaneously, I could see that uh, both are droops, uh, both the seeds are enclosed inside the fruits, but still that the basic cause for dormancy is entirely different between teak and melia. So that was my experience. So why this dormancy? That is the one question. If it is so problematic, why this dormancy? So we must accept that this is a problem only for the human beings. But actually, this is a protective mechanism for the seeds. So if the seed coat offers the physical protection to the seeds it is only the dormancy that gives the physiological protection to the seeds you know the seeds are laying outside in the barren land or in the soil exposed to all conditions extreme conditions of light temperature humidity etc but how the seeds remain alive in the soil seed bank and then give rise to uh, seedlings regularly in order to keep the vegetation intact in the forests that is only because of seed dormancy but SAR is interested in the dormancy which afflicts the agricultural crops. So he is mainly working in mung bean and then um, rice. Uh, so I think we must hear from him uh, so some interesting facts, how the dormancy is helpful or it is not helpful for the farmers with respect to the uh, 
seed production and then uh, germination everybody knows because uh, in one uh, presentation vice chancellor was asking hard seeds are good or bad good or bad sir both <laughs> so how <laughs> yeah so so now i leave the dais to sir and he will explain why it is good and why it is bad thank you so much for this opportunity i take this opportunity to thank uh, the dean pgs he is having a very very uh, tight schedule two meetings he is attending at the same time sir but he has got the time to come over here also thank you so much dr sindhil thank you everybody thank you thank you ma'am for your nice introductory address uh, next we would like to invite our uh, respected dean school of post graduate studies tnau coimbatore for opening remarks so good mo good morning to all i am really happy to be here in the uh, special lecture uh, dr vijay from uh, division of seed science technology iri new delhi uh, dr umar rani ma director seats and the head of the department dr manon mani and kavita and senior faculties and the students masters and phd students uh, really it is a good occasion to learn cross learning from uh, uh, people from uh, iri the leading institute because we always compete with iri in terms of uh, uh, that means that uh, competition is a healthy competition to so how to grow uh, together or to how to grow in the international scenario so every institute is uh, looking for opportunity and growing so in that we learn from cross learning tna is learning from iri iri people are also visiting here so it is a cross learning sir so we we want to learn from the people from national uh, institutes because they have the long history of uh, iri have their uh, long history of uh, working on the seed the seed dormancy and another thing we'll be happy that uh, dathulani madam is here and uh, uh, so also we are hosting her, her student uh, vijay so uh, it is a uh, fortunate that the students and the chairman sharing that same dais and uh, learning from different uh, different generation we i can call it a different generation the 3 uh, 4 decade of madam's work and also uh, the recent work is uh, Uh, the students continuing on some of the areas so really it is a interesting note that to learn from that very lengthy decades learning is uh, interesting so in that really your uh, presentation today will be helpful for our students to learn about the seed dormancy and again um, as uh, director seeds uh, telling about the uh, hot seed or not uh, the, either it's a good or bad so uh, again the seed really um, uh, dormancy is one of the very big area and very few people are working on the seed, seed dormancy because uh, as a evolutionary by genetist i can say that uh, the crop evolution is started from breaking the dormancy so otherwise the people don't break the dormancy you cannot grow the crop so and some people say the anthropologist and others the seed the seed dormancy is better to study the how 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 to preserve and how to maintain that again uh, people in the gin bank they say say that they are happy if their dormant seed are there uh, they can grow for a keep for longer storage time if, so that's why the when uh, umar and madam talking about the seed crops that tree tree seeds it's uh, their their duty is to break the dormancy to get a better crops for the agroforestry system when people like uh, dr vijay working on the agriculture crops uh, so dormancy uh, in the field crops like mung bean and the institute germination and rice these are all the big issues to address that how to prolong that dormancy so these are all playing between the uh, the, the game is which side we have to play and how safely we have to play and uh, how quickly we have to play these are all the things uh, working on dormancy i think he is the right person to uh, enlighten enlighten you on that and really happy there happy that uh, on behalf of tamil nadu agriculture university and also on behalf of our vice chancellor i am uh, welcoming you for this uh, today's talk and definitely this talk will be useful for our students and also it uh, helps our faculty to uh, rethink on their objectives and how to move forward on the seed dormancy i am on behalf of the dean school of post graduate studies i thank you for come over here and uh, uh, delivering this uh, guest lecture thank you for thank you giving me the opportunity thank you anand thank you sir for your nice opening remarks now we would like to request most respected our today's guest speaker dr d vijay principal scientist 
Division of Seed Science and Technology, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, for delivering guest lecture on sea dormancy and its regulation. Now the session is over to our guest speaker. Thank you, Madam. Respected Dean Dr. N. Sintil, uh, uh, Respected Director Seed Center Dr. Umarani, Respected Head and Professor uh, Dr. B. Mananmani, and uh, Distinguished Faculty, Students. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. This is my first visit to TNAU, in fact, to Coimbatore also. Uh, I know that this is having a very prestigious institute, and you all people are very lucky to be here. And I also feel proud to be. Uh, coming over here and delivering a lecture uh, because of this. Particularly in seed technology, this is having a lot of value. Seed technology, Coimbatore is very, very strong. It's known to be. Uh, now, directly, I'm jumping to the top of the topic. Uh, I'm going to deliver a discussion type on seed dormancy and its regulation. Briefly, I will cover about the introduction of what is the dormancy, what is its importance, then what is the biological role of the dormancy. Then in seed production and testing, what is its activities? Means how it is useful or not. Then the classification of the dormancy, because if we want to understand anything, we should know first understand the classification. What is what? Then only we can understand it better. So we will see about the classification and its revision. Then regulation of physical dormancy, because I am working on Mungbin, I will take that as the case study and I will explain, try to explain it. Then some aspect on physiological dormancy with respect to that of the rice. So this is what I'm going to discuss. Now coming to that of the introduction. We all know that the germination is very, very important. Germination is very, very important. Particularly we for testing purpose, it is a compulsory test along with that of the physical purity and moisture content in seed testing aspect and it directly gives us the plant stand. What is that available on the field? The germination is the basis for that. And of course, it influences the yield and indicates the viability. So these are all the some of the important characteristics of the germination. But once when the seed matures on the plant, it will be having a choice based upon the conditions what are available to it, whether it is favorable condition or unfavorable condition. If it is a favorable condition, Suppose it is a favorable condition means then it has two options, whether it is ready to germinate or it can stay back. Whereas in case of unfavorable conditions, it will remain as such that we called as quiescent stays. So quiescent is different from the dormancy that all of you are well known. Then the important thing here we have to consider is dormancy is not the absence of germination. It is the choice of the seed to remain like that without germination. So it determines the conditions required for the germination. Why it has to be determined? Because germination is only once in the lifetime. Once it's germinate, it cannot go back. It is irreversible fact. So the seed has to think a lot whether to germinate or not, whether the conditions are good or not. So the seed will decide, then it will germinate. So in that area, the dormancy plays an important role. And if we see in general, dormancy is a natural phenomenon. And we all know the definition that is the inability of the viable seed to germinate even under the favorable conditions. And it's present across the species that shows its importance. Then in the domesticated crops, as Dr. Senthil told, it has been lost in most of the domesticated crops and controlled by both genetics and environment, which makes it a challenging task. And it is a very, very complex phenomenon like seed vigor, seed yield, so like that, it is also a very, very complex phenomenon and there are different types and combinations are there. We will see one by one. Now coming to that of the importance of the dormancy. Uh, as discussed, the dormant seed over a period of time because of two reasons. One is the domestication syndrome. So people want to have the seeds to be germinated immediately. So because of that, they started go on selecting over a period of long period of domestication, a non-dormant ones. And not only that, the breeding aspect also, the breeders over a long period of time, they are automatically selecting the non-dormant ones. So because of this, now most of the cultivated varieties are not having any dormancy, but it has brought some negative also, that is the pre-harvest protein. 
pre-harvest sprouting is nothing but whenever it, the plant is there, uh, whenever seed is there on the plant itself, it will start germinating. So that will become a problem, particularly in the coming era, where we are seeing a lot of changes in the climatic factors. Suddenly there will be a rainfall, particularly during the maturation stage, it will lead to pre-harvest sprouting. And the pre-harvest sprouting is a very huge damage, nearly 1 billion US dollars. In 2006 itself, it has been estimated by Black et al. that that much loss will occur in different crops. In major, major crops are cereals, particularly wheat, then rice to some extent. And of course, in some legumes like mung bean, black gram, these also will be affected. Since I am working on these two crops, I am uh, telling these losses. In case of mung bean, it is around 60 to 70 percent loss. Whereas in case of rice, we don't have direct estimates, but some estimates in China, they told that 20 percent of the hybrid rice area is being affected by this pre-harvest protein. So before going into the things, we should be clear with some of the terminology. Pre-harvest sprouting and sometimes we may be hearing the VB parry or precocious germination. We should be very clear of those things. Pre-harvest sprouting is the germination of seeds which have matured on the plant. So that has been completed the maturation drying, but they got germinated because of the humid condition or rainy condition. That is pre-harvest sprouting. It is quite different from that of the precocious germination where still the embryo is in the developing state. So it should not be confused with the precocious germination. Pre-harvest sprouting is related to the dormancy problem, whereas precocious germination, it is not having any relation to the dormancy. Of course, the biochemical things may be same, but it's not related to the dormancy. Whereas VB Perry, under the unfavorable conditions, the plantlets will form on the plant itself. Particularly, we can see it in the mangroves and also several vegetables also, this will be occurring. So that is the almost we can use a synonymous to the precocious germination. But there is another one is called a pseudo VB parry. Here, instead of the reproductive ones, the adventitious buds will start into plantlets along with that of the spikelets on the same spike on the inflorescence. Here, this is the penicetum pedicillatum, also called as dinanath grass. So on this here, we can see both these are the spikelets and along with that plantlets have also been developed. So this is called a pseudo VB parry. So there are different types of there. So we are concentrating on the pre-harvest sprouting and its protection thing, the dormancy. Now coming to that of the question, the conundrum, that whether dormancy is useful or not, as uh, told by the earlier speakers, that based upon your perspective, from which side you are. So from ecological point of view, it is a very, very essential trait. That's why various plant species during the evolution has acquired it. And it is one of the last one different types of dormancy. It is one of the last one that has been acquired. And it is very much successful for the unfavorable environment. That is from the plant side. But from the human being side or from agriculture point of view, it is non-essential trait as it impairs the various agricultural operations. So how it is benefit? First thing is it is the temporal spread of germination that it will give time space. How it will give the time space? By using the different levels of dormancy. So within the particular species, that is called as heteromorphy. Like in case of Chinopodium album, it will produce four different types of seeds, four different combinations, like black and brown two colors and reticulate and smooth. The combination of black and smooth will give deep dormancy, others will be having shallow dormancy. So the same plant can produce two different things for two different situations. Similarly, in case of Janthium species or cell sola, there are heteromorphy is there. From the same fruit, we can have different seeds which are having different levels of dormancy. That is temporal, so that at different times it can germinate. Next one is reduction of death risk, particularly in the unfavorable situation. Hopefully, all of you might have seen that, particularly whenever you are growing a Karif crop or a Rabi crop, most of the time seeds will shatter and they will not germinate in the coming season. Suppose if rice has been fallen, it will not germinate in the rabi season, even though it is getting water and everything. It will germinate only in the next curry. Same thing will happen in case of rabi crops also. Because they will be undergoing into a, another kind of dormancy that is called a secondary dormancy. So this will help in particular requirement. So once it undergoes into a dormancy, it requires specific period of time particular condition, then only it will break. 
so thereby it will avoid the germination in the unfavorable situation next one is spatial distribution since dormancy is there it is not germinating it is having extra time for the dispersal so that it can go to far places and it can establish next one is the it prevents the in situ germination that is pre harvest sprouting that we have already seen the next advantage is allows the germination only during the favorable times like as i told in the secondary dormancy so whenever the sun conditions will be suitable then only the germination will occur otherwise it will stop the germination so that it will go into dormancy again then reduces the competition of the siblings now coming to the the problems so these are all the advantages because of the from the plant point of view for its better survival whereas from the agriculture point of view if you see it is a problematic in the seed production we will see what are those problems then problems during the seed quality testing and problematic during culinary purpose or consumption as i can give the example of the mung bean or any legumes if their hard seeds are there for cooking purpose it will be create a problem or for using them as a sprouts it is a problem then to the industry also particularly the industry is brewing industry like malting for that purpose if dormancy is there it is a problem so now coming to that of the seed technology point of view how the dormancy is problematic in seed quality assessment so what it will do in the seed testing it interferes with normal germination procedures because seeds will not germinate if you keep it if they are having the dormancy so your germination test will fail second thing is time of testing increases so you have to break the dormancy again you have to do the test so first you have to do you are seeing the dormancy so again you have to do extra time you require then rejection of the lots i will tell you a small thing that happened practically to me so when i am working at maruteru rrs maruteru we are having a rice variety called mtu 1001 which is having 7 weeks dormancy so once we have produced that lot and have that is the first time we are uh, produce multiplying for foundation and certified purpose so we have given it for certification purpose and they have rejected the lot but when we have tested in our lab it is having 98% germination so then i have to write a letter to that of the director of the seed certification officer to train those seed testing lab people that it is having a very high dormancy and you have to break the dormancy to test it and of course later it has been passed after doing this test so it will happen sometimes we don't know the about the species whether they are having dormancy or not or sometimes we know that it is not having dormancy but because of growing in different situations it may acquire the dormancy also so such things may lead to rejection of the lots then additional treatments require time and skill so obviously the time will increase the person should know the skill whether he is handling the acid or he is handling a different material so he should have some additional precautions and skill and loss of germination due to additional treatments this also happens for example in case of rice the dormancy breaking method can be two things one is the most common one is the acid or a heat treatment in case of heat treatment 50 degree centigrade for 7 days is the recommended one suppose if that oven temperature has raised up to 60 degree centigrade your entire lot will be lost means your germination thing will be lost so such things can happen so you have to be very careful while giving the treatments also now coming to that of the seed production point of view seed production point of view most of the things are known things only like poor plant establishment i am not going to delve into this then non uniform germination the difficulty in off type identification because the late ones will come the dormant ones will come lately so whether it is because of the off type or because of the dormancy the same Uh, variety has come up so to identify the off types it will become a difficult there will be change in the flowering pattern height and all those things then extended roging which leads to extended roging and non synchronization in case of parents particularly of hybrids occurrence of volunteer plants again that it is a big problem then weeds if they are having the dormancy that infestation will be more and additional treatments are required for sowing we have to break the dormancy then logistic problems because of this additional treatments and seed quality issues due to uneven maturity so n number of problems but most of the things are known to all of you so i am not going in detail then seed dormancy versus longevity this is one of the interesting thing whether the dormant seed is long lived or not 
if you see the history we know that the lotus is having very very long life similarly the phoenix is having the long life the palms are having long life and if you see all of them are physically dormant so it clearly shows that the dormancy is suitable for the long life but it is not the case with all the situations it is mostly related to the physical dormancy not for all types of dormancy in some recent studies there is a negative correlation has been observed particularly between the dormancy the physiological dormancy and the seed longevity so the studies by till now only there are two studies were there on these two aspects at the molecular level that mugen et al in 2012 they have studied for the first time a negative relationship between the seed longevity that gas and dormancy that dog so there is a negative relationship with the increase of this dormancy will decrease if the increase of the dormancy there is a negative re- correlation between these two later after that that was in arabidopsis the next crop was wheat where they have studied jang et al in 2021 they also found that there is a negative correlation you can see all the things are of negative correlations except these two there was no studies and of course in our lab we are in the way of doing that in case of rice uh, whenever i come to the rice i will try to explain that so not only the f- physical dormancy of course physical dormancy is giving a longevity but physiological dormancy there is still lot of studies are required because it is limited studies are there which are showing a negative relationship now categories of the dormancy there is a difference between the classification and categories classification is a systematic one categories is based upon the types like based upon the location it can be called as embryo dormancy if it is from the seed coat it is coat imposed dormancy or based upon the time of induction it is a primary dormancy and the plant itself or secondary dormancy after it is released from the plant it, it again gains the dormancy means it is secondary dormancy based upon the type of part epicotyl dormancy the radical will emerge but epicotyl will not emerge that is called as epicotyl dormancy or double dormancy the radical will emerge both of them will be having dormancy but at different levels or because of the environment factors like light scoto dormancy temperature thermo dormancy or whether two types of dormancy is occurring simultaneously or at alternatively so like this these are all different categories but a classification is a different thing a classification is a systematic separation of the things to understand the things better so we can know that even before harper also in there was some studies but harper uh, considered to be the first person who has classified in a systematic way that innate dormancy which we call it now as a primary dormancy and for it is nothing but fissions under favorable condi- and unfavorable conditions then induced that is the secondary dormancy then the important person who has given the classification is nikolova uh, she was the russian plant biologist for the first time she has given a very systematic classification she has divided into two different groups induced that is what quiescence unfavorable conditions uh, that is imposed then one next one is organic again organic has been divided into three types exogenous physical chemical mechanical physical means physical barrier the coat is giving a physical barrier to water taking uptake then chemicals coat is giving releasing some of the chemicals and third one is mechanical the coat is giving some obstruction so these are the three different types of things in the case of exogenous then endogenous within the seed itself physiological morphological or morphophysiological then a combinational one later we should thank the baskin and baskin of of course all of us know that the very famous book seeds the biogeography book that is very very famous and they are really really hard working people if you read the in index of the foreword of that book there they have written one sentence to write that book they have taken more than long period more than 10 20 years because what they said is well they are writing new information is coming so they are composing it they are incorporating it again new information so they are really dedicated persons from 60s onwards madam carol is working on dormancy aspects 60s onwards till she is working so they have given they have taken this nikolovas classification and further they have classified into three type system that is class level and type so the class is 
physiological dormancy, morphological dormancy, morphophysiological, physical, and combinational. This they have given in 2004. Again, under the class, they have given different levels, particularly in case of physiological dormancy, deep, intermediate, non deep, and different types in the non deep. Similarly, in case of morphophysiological, there are some around eight types are there. And in combinational, only one because here the combination, the PD is non deep. So this is the easiest one to understand. But the situation is not like that. As I told you, it's a very, very complex thing. So when more and more number of species are being studied, this system is not sufficient to classify. So they started revising it. In 2014, they have made the first revision. And then later in 2021, in December 2021, they have revised it and they have again published it a new system. Before going into that, we will see some more terminology like innate dormancy. It is the actual or primary dormancy. That means the seeds will not germinate even any set of normal conditions. Whereas non-dormancy means under a wide range of conditions, it will germinate. After ripening, for a period of time, it will acquire the ability to germinate. Then conditional, it is a transition state. It's not like that today it is dormant, tomorrow it will become non-dormant. It has to pass on through a state. That state is called as conditional dormancy. Dormancy cycling means the non-dormant to dormant or dormant to non-dormant through conditional dormancy that is called a cycling. So coming to that of the physiological dormancy, I will go through a little bit to have an understanding. It is mainly because of low growth potential of the embryo and majority of the seeds are having physiological dormancy in the nature. In the deep, there is a little bit differences are there. Like if you excise the embryo, it will produce abnormal seedlings. Based on that, you can understand it is a deep physiological dormancy. Then germination, GA will not promote the germination and it requires three to four months stratification. Whenever it is becoming intermediate, the situations or conditions are a little bit less stringent. And in case of non-deep, it is still less stringent and after ripening will also help in germinating. Whereas different types based upon the temperature they have given. If the dormancy decreases with increase in temperature type 1, if it is a reverse type 2, if under both the increase or decrease if it is there type 3 and only at high temperature type 4 and low temperature it is type 5. And majority of the seeds are having non-deep in the non-deep type 1 and type 2. Morphological dormancy, the term name itself is saying that it's not completely developed before releasing. So here, what is the dormancy breaking treatment? It is nothing but time. Then morphophysiological, it is a combinational one. Again, it is a very, very complex one because it is having the complexity of the physiological as well as from the morphological point of view. So it is one of the most complex one, like non-deep simple, intermediate simple, where different kinds of stratifications are required. So I'm not going to do it because this will be available in any textbook. Then physical dormancy because of the impermeable seed coats and dormancy break will occur both under natural and artificial conditions. And only one monocot family is having the physical dormancy and no recalcitrant seed is having the physical dormancy. Then combinational, both physical and physiological. Physiological, it is non-deep. So either the physical may break first or the physiological may break first. Now this is the dormancy key. I think maybe in your classes it might have been taught. So how you have to identify first, you have to see the seed coat permeability, whether it is uptaking the water and fully developed or not. Then if it occurs, you have to go for scarification. If it is germinating after scarification, it is physical. Even after scarification, it is taking time, then it is physical and physiological. The seed coat is permeable, embryo, whether it is underdeveloped, then it is morphological. And if it is even after some time, it is not able to germinate, then it is morphophysiological. And if the seeds do not germinate within about 30 days, it is physiological with a completely developed embryo. And if they are able to germinate, it is non dormant But that is for old classification. But for the new classification, it is very difficult because in the new classification, what they did is they have included a 2014 they have included division subdivision and subclass but whereas in case of 2021 now they have included one more sub level also so this shows that how much complex the dormancy is becoming because the species which we cannot imagine how they will germinate some seeds they will not be having the embryo they have to develop it and they will not come out directly they will not produce the radical directly 
they will produce some tubes through which the embryo will come out so lot of complications are there in case of dormancy and one more thing is the latest understanding is dormancy is labile that means you cannot say that this kind of dormancy will be there exclusively to this so it can vary there are several instances that the one which is non dormant under one situation has become dormant in another situation so there is no stringent condition we can say that it will be like this only so the dormancy is labile of course not in all the species but to some species it is still not sure now this is the glimpses of the latest revision of the dormancy classification i will not go even i could not uh, read it properly it will take lot of time so the glimpses are they have made into two divisions imposed that is quiescence then organic is the second division where the subdivision one is exogenous under which physical is there so this is similar to that of the nikolova where a subdivision two endogenous again in this morphological is there so earlier only morphological and it is having some for that no classification is there but now you can see they are made into several these are specialized because specialized means the dust seeds maybe they are orchids maybe they are parasites with the seed is which is very small and which we cannot see with the naked eye it's just like dust so they have included those also now in the morphological character uh, classification earlier it has been omitted but now they have included it then physiological like non deep intermediate deep that comes under regular that what we have seen earlier now they have included the epicotyl inverse epicotyl hypocotylar and cryptozeal this is the one of the interesting thing cryptozeal so it is not like epizeal and hypozeal it is covered then it will come out particularly in case of orchids then morphophysiological again it is having so many levels intermediate non deep deep and non deep epicotyl deep epicotyl deep simple similarly all classes they have made sub classes and a combinational again earlier there is no classification now they have made classification into that so if you see the overall there are two divisions two sub divisions five classes and in sub classes if you see in class 1 there are no sub classes then class 2 7 3 5 4 12 and class 5 is 2 the levels sub levels and types are varying now coming to that of the mechanism this is all about the classification little bit boring one then even the carol has if you see the latest presentation in few months back she has given maybe one month back she has given there the term she has used is dormancy is really a headache <laughs> understanding the dormancy is a headache because of the so much complexity so now coming to the mechanisms i am not going into detail of those mechanisms but we know that the germination blocks can be at the embryo level like underdeveloped embryo or inhibitors or physiological constraints or the outer covering layers maybe water uptake or gas exchange and all those things environmental factors soil fertility also plays an important role in dormancy induction as well as breakage light temperature and the genetic aspects so during the breakage what will happen it's the same phenomenon but with a little modification that first it has to perceive the dormancy signal then either the dormancy promoting systems have to be suppressed or dormancy breaking systems have to be upregulated so that the surrounding structures will be weakened and the radical will germinate so the dormancy main mechanisms the most commonest till now this is the theory to which all the kind of understandings are coming that is the hormonal theory the ratio of aba and go plays the major role now of course new hormones are also being taken into ethylene has been long back it has been studied but now brassnosteroids and jasponates are also playing a role again in controlling the ratio of aba ga then after ripening different kinds of temperatures light and chemicals are there and this is overall picture that regulation at the time of development the seed will be having a choice based upon the genotype as well as based upon the environment to become a dormant or non dormant if it is non dormant it will lead to germination but again it will be having a secondary choice that to enter into a secondary dormancy even the dormant because of some external cues it will become non dormant but again it will be having a chance to enter into a second dormancy secondary dormancy otherwise it will germinate now coming to that of the uh, my work 
on which I am working, the hard seeds. In case of uh, physical dormancy, we will call them as hard seeds. It is a well-known fact that it is mainly because of the macrosclerites or the walls of these palisades are thickened or sometimes the suberant coat is there or the cuticle is there which will make it impermeable to water. But there are certain structures, openings are there during the development itself, like micropyle. Micropyle is an opening which is present during the development, it is opened. But at the time of development, it will close. Similarly, the lens part or the hilum region, they will become impermeable. Then this is more common in case of certain families and in which the Fabaceae mung bean also. In mung bean, what we did is to understand this physical dormancy. We have taken more than 100 genotypes. Then we made a simple study like we have seen the breakage of the dormancy by using keeping it for germination. And also we have seen a pod germination. For that first, we have standardized the duration of soaking of these pods because in nature, the problem is the pre-harvest protein will occur on the pods itself. So we have seen that also as the condition. By using this condition, we have screened more than 100 genotypes of mung bean. And we have come to conclusion that certain genotypes are having very high dormancy certain are having zero dormancy, but not 100% dormancy because these are all cultivar varieties. So these are not uh, germplasm. So zero dormancy is not there, but we can find some of the genotypes which are having very high dormancy based upon this pod germination, pod hard seedness or seed germination. We made into two groups. Then we have seen the imbibition patterns, the water uptake patterns. And it can be clearly observed that in within five hours, we can see a clear distinction between the dormant and non-dormant groups. So by taking that into queue, we have checked this, the dormant group, whether it is really a physical dormancy or not. So we have abraded the situation, the dormant hard seed, and within half an hour, it started protruding the radical. So then it is concluded that as it is physical dormancy. Then what we did is during the development, what is happening when this dormancy induction is occurring. So to know that we have taken different stages. Here I have shown only the prominent stages uh, where we have seen that whether this seed is having the coat is whether permeable or not, whether it is living or not. To see that thing we have imbibed with the tetrazolium. So in the early stages what happened, you can see here when the seed has been imbibed, the seed coat also developed a red color and the embryo also developed a red color. That means seed coat is living, embryo is also living and seed coat is permeable. That's why the tetrazolium has entered inside and stained the embryo. So in the early stages, the seed coat is permeable. Later, we have taken the study at 26 days after pollination. Here you can see the seed coat has not been stained. That means First, the seed coat is losing its viability or liveliness. It is losing its liveliness, but still it is permeable. But when we enter into the 35 days when the completely dried one, either it is completely impermeable or we have found some of the interesting things where we have seen a partial straining with increase in the size. Imbibition has occurred. So physical dormancy till now, there is no subclassifications are there. Either dormancy is there or absent. But now we are seeing in something like intermediate. It has imbibed, it has not germinated, but still it has taken some. So we have opened it and we have seen coat is completely green. That means it is non-living. The embryo stained, but very mildly stained. That means small uptake is there. There is not fully fledged uptake is there. So this one I will correlate in the next slide. Then we have seen that what could be the reasons. Then we have studied here, I am not sure, have not shown, but we have studied a different compounds. Like we have seen the polyphenols, phenolic compounds, proanthocyanidins, whether these are present, whether they are having any effect. We have compared a dormant group and non-dormant group based upon the earlier study that we have seen two different groups. From that, we have taken one uh, genotype each and we have made. Then they, we could not find any difference either in proanthocyanidins or in case of phenols, could not find any difference. Then what we did is 
we want to see about the lignin but before going into the lignin i want to tell that it is a very very complex pathway lignin pathway is very very complex it starts in the cytosol with the amino acids then it will enter uh, end with three different monomers either h unit or s unit or g unit these are all monomers of lignins which will become polymer which will be polymerized in the cell wall and will be deposited in the cell wall so for this peroxidase and lacase these are the two enzymes that are required for this polymerization so we have studied this peroxidase how it is there in case of this tm uh, 9625 this is a dormant one this is a non dormant genotype and the red one is at stage 3 this one where the seed coat is permeable and this is blue one is stage 4 where the seed coat becomes impermeable so here when we have seen in case of dormant one you can see a very steep rise here you can see the steep rise in the peroxidase has been observed in the stage 4 not in the stage 3 whereas there is no difference in case of stage 3 and 4 in case of the non dormant one so peroxidase levels have increased so being, since peroxidase is one of the important enzyme in making this polymerization of the lignin we have seen the lignin also here in case of lignin we can find a significant difference in lignin this is particularly in case of seed coat if we see in total seed also it has been but in case of embryo when we have seen there is no change so seed coat the lignin deposition is increasing in the stage 4 then later there are some few studies we have came across the catechin lignin is one of the another lignin that is very specific to the seed coat but till now it has not been correlated with dormancy but it has been correlated with hardening of the seed coat in several species so this could be one of the possible source for development of the hard seededness in case of mung bean because in case of mung bean the reasons have not been studied except for the palisade tissue later jagannathan et al in 2022 in last year itself he has formulated based upon his theory a concept they have formulated a similar kind of thing what we have observed they have, what they found is with the decrease in the moisture content after maturity there will be a, some permeable state will be there in case of physical dormancy then it will enter into a shallow dormancy then it will become dormancy with further decrease in the moisture content if you remember the earlier figures i have shown you a big size seed which is partially imbibed so that is matching with the shallow dormancy so dormancy it's coming with that of the permeability is there initially but later it is becoming shallow then it becoming absolute but still lot of questions has to be answered how this shallow dormancy will be influencing the preconditioning how it is opening the water gaps whether it will be going back to the normal dormant all these things have to be answered still studies have to because this is very latest concept he has proposed then out of curiosity what we have seen is whether the position of the seed is having any effect on the dormancy in general in most of the crops the position is having effect on the quality that is known but whether the position of the seed is having any effect on the dormancy per se in case of mung bean see here you can see the horizontal ones this one is a pod you think each line is a pod that each cell is a seed each one block is a seed so in the first pod there are 12 seeds are there in the second one there are nine in the third one there are nine like that because the pod size will be varying and similarly if you see the red color that is the dormant as i have told that we have standardized the 5 hours incubation is sufficient to differentiate the dormant and non dormant we have used that here and the green one is the non hard seed so if you see this this is around 50 pods have been studied which have been matured at the same time in case of dormant genotype and non dormant genotype so there is no exclusivity will be there but we cannot see there is a mosaic type is there there are some patches of green in between are there so to be more clear we have studied the percentage of each position if you see in each position the hard seed percentage varies and again here one then one question comes that in we are saying up to 12 but some seeds will be having some parts will be having only nine seeds will be there so the 12th one means it will be misleading so what we did is next is we have taken the first three and last three irrespective of the number 
there also there is no relation between the position with the hardness either in case of hard seed the dormant variety or non dormant variety then when while doing this one more thing what we have observed is within a pod uh, for the information moong bean is a highly self pollinated crop so within the pod there is a lot of variation in the dormancy because this thing will be of course will be pollinated by different pollens of the same plant when each pollen is pollinating so each seed will be formed but within the same ovary that's why it will be in the same pod so there you get lot of difference so some are becoming dormant some are becoming non dormant what could be the reason whether this dormancy is being continued to the next stage or not what we did is we have screened this we have seen individually we have taken each seed we have checked whether it is dormant or not dormant if it is non dormant we have shown if it is dormant we have made a scarification and again we have shown so now we know that whether this plant parent seed is dormant or non dormant this plant parent seed is dormant or non dormant we know now we have seen the dormancy percentage in the next generation if you see from the dormant you can see lot of variation there are some parts without any dormancy at all and from the non dormancy we have seen 100% dormancy so there is no pattern we could find what could be the reason why within the same pod there is lot of variation in the dormancy levels this is one of the interesting things so we started looking after the things some of the possible explanations for this is the role of maternal environment role of maternal environment in physiological dormancy several studies were there but role of maternal environment on physical dormancy very very few studies were there so in broadly baskin what he told uh, is during drying the climatic drying the natural drying that the plants will get exposed that has led to the physical dormancy so number of species when they have been seen the high temperature combined with high rh has produced impermeable seed very high quantity of impermeable seeds but when the high temperature is combined with high rh no impermeable seeds similarly low temperature with low rh impermeable seeds are there low temperature with high rh no impermeable seeds so what it shows rh is important if your rh the relative humidity is less irrespective of the temperature it is leading to the impermeable seed of course temperature is also contributing that's why high and moderate are there but rh is very very crucial so the rh the plant or the individual plant will vary in the rh that is what we call as micro environment so the micro environment is playing a major role in this and also sometimes the air the oxygen levels there were some separate studies where they have removed the air they have put the nitrogen and they have seen whether the hardness is forming or not hardness is not forming only in the presence of oxygen hardness is developing so oxygen is also playing a role in development of the hard but still much studies are required in this not only that during the before development itself they have taken the seeds and they have given different exposure times jagannath et al so what they found is with the increase in the hours of the drying the dormancy has increased you can see there is no increase in the seed mass increase in the seed mass means they have imbibed the seeds and they have taken the weight so if they are hard seeds there is no increase in the weight so there is no increase in the weight if the drying has increased from here control to this one so 10 hours 20 hours 30 hours 60 hours of drying they have made so what this shows that the exposure of the seeds are sometimes the pods to different temperatures may also be causing the thing they are doing uh they are present they are working on uh, something very interesting they are taking the plants and they are adding the dermocouples to the individual parts not in case of moong bean but some wild species and they are seeing the temperature of that during the development whether shade if it is getting how much effect it is having how much temperature it is getting and what rh it is getting exposed whether there is a link or not so they are very much interested that the moisture content is playing a major role so which is the very very new study to be taken up so then recently last month itself there was a paper published by sharma et al from the nipgr 
they have given a wonderful concept like bet hedging bet hedging is a very old one but what they have told is the germination variability in genetically identical seeds the seeds are same but they are not germinating uniformly why this variation is there and what could be the molecular reasons for that like what they have found or they have proposed is some epigenetic reason the epigenetic reasons are the genes are same same genes are present because it is from the same plant or same pod but the epigenetic variations creates the difference in the expression levels of the genes so once the genes are differentially expressed like it has been proved with the differential hormonal quantities in individual seeds so each seed is having a different hormonal quantity and this is affecting the things another thing they have found is the threshold of integrators not only the major hormones but there are several other supporting things are there the supporting things like in case of here the della genes or the lia genes or lia proteins or dvoz what these will do these will impose the dormancy but not directly affecting the aba so the particular threshold level of these expression of these genes is also important to impose the dormancy so there is now one more factor has been added so it is making the situation complicated then there are some condensates biomolecular condensates like here i have given an example of flvoe protein this protein will in, uh, induce the dormancy will induce the dormancy because of increased abscisic acid so individual cells are having different quantities and this is has been not only in case of this plants it has been studied in case of bacteria where you can make uniform cellular cultures even after making uniform cellular cultures the individual cells are varying so that shows that at this individual cell level the variations are there which could be the reasons for the differential transcriptional heterogeneity and this differential transcriptional heterogeneity is leading to the variation in the germination or variation in the dormancy in the individual seeds but it has to be proved it has to be studied then the genetics very few studies have been done in case of physical dormancy in case of physiological dormancy we will see all the aba genes we have seen and cds from cyp the biosynthesis genes the catabolic genes similarly in case of ga we have seen ga3 ox2 ga3 ox3 which is one is promoting one is catabolizing the ga so we have seen n number of genes are there even dvoz is there in case of rice sdr4 is there recently sdr6 has been identified so many are there there is no dearth of dormancy genes controlling dormancy controlling genes for physiological dormancy but for physical dormancy if you see a study was made in 80s a classical study they told that single gene is controlling the dormancy but after 20 to 25 years later they have found one qtl that hs1 hard seed a which is contribute which is a major qtl like 23% by humphrey later in 12 2012 again you can see another 7 years later they have found another qtl that seed dormancy sdwa 5.1 which is a major qtl later in 20 2016 and 21 chai et al they what they found is they have found one particular protein which is importing the physical dormancy actually what they have found is this protein is a knotted arabidopsis thaliana protein which they have found in case of vigna radiata also that's why this is vr this one is uh, controlling the seed dormancy by the expression of cyp cyp is nothing but the cuticle biosynthesis gene so it is modifying the cuticle biosynthesis that's why it is making the changes not only that the interesting thing here is it is also controls the very long chain lipids so is there any relationship for the lipids in, in the seed coat also for the dormancy that is another interesting thing then 2022 lavocyte they have found two major qtls and when they have seen this what are the genes that are regulating uh, present in this after fine mapping they have found this calmodel proteins which are directly involved in the aba induced inhibition so in physical dormancy also now aba is coming into the picture till now we thought only the structural thing later 
in the same year last year itself these studies are in last year very recent studies not even a sing- one year is over while they have studying this sw sdwa 5.3.1 in case of wild mung bean what they have found is they have found one gene actually they have co-located a marker and then based upon the marker they have identified this gene which is encoding the gibberellin catabolism so ga and aba are maybe linked to the physical dormancy also particularly in case of mung bean now coming to that of the fatty acids in a recent study what they have found is the unsaturated fatty acids in the seed coat will maintain the physical dormancy so that's what in the here they have found the cuticle biosynthesis as well as very long chain lipids so here it is relating and now the questions to be answered are whether mung bean is having both physical and physiological dormancy till now we are of the opinion that it is having only physical dormancy if it is having physiological dormancy when it is getting broken broken so that it is germinating whenever we are rupturing the seed coat so at the time of maturity itself it is getting lost or what are the factors that are influencing it then whether the bed hedging is the reason for this variation in single seeds or the within the pod variation and what is the role of moisture in imposing these things which are the need studyable areas to understand better about the physical dormancy because it is the least studied concept then coming to that of the genes we know that cutial mapping is one of the best thing to have understanding but cutial mapping will be done by making the lab populations so you will take two contrasting parents cross them you will get the f2 population where you will get wide variability for that particular character or you can use a real population where you will go over the generations and you will stabilize the things or you can use a magic population where you will use multiple parents to get the magic population but these are all having certain limitations what are the limitations the allelic diversity because you are choosing two parents or a group of parents means you are restricting the things then the amount of recombination is very less because maybe few generations so the another technique the new technique not very new but most useful technique that is jivas genome wide association studies what the jivas tells is you have to take a large number of population which is having historical recombination because these plants are being the genotypes are being there from long long back so all type of natural combinations possible combinations are occurring in them and that's why it has developed into a natural population not a lab population which is very narrow but here what in, in jivas what we will see is we will see the single nucleotide polymorphism a single polymorphism whether that polymorphism is associated with the required character or not that we will see across large number of genotypes then we will make a association that is mapping but for this certain requirements are also there like the high phenotypic variance the population you are taking should have lot of variation for the character you are choosing because the population will be having several characters but the character which we are choosing whether it is having that much variation or not then it should be very large population and we should be having the very dense genotyping the snp marker should be very highly dense then only we will get the things so based on this what we did is we have taken 133 mung bean genotypes for which the genotyping has already been done then we have used the morphological data we have taken this morphological data based upon the videometer lab instead of measuring each individual seed we have taken the videometer lab so it has given the advantage of this is at a time you can get at least 40 seeds data 40 seeds length width all the area parameter perimeter all the things you will get and not only that we will get the reflectance because this videometer is having a property of producing 19 different wavelengths so that will produce and the reflected ones will be measured uh, it is 80 80 lakhs madam uh, even we are not having even we are not having <laughs> with the tie up with the industry we have requested them and we got it and we worked on that <laughs> for one week we had that instrument in uh, in delhi it is available but actually that is from gujarat 
no no uh, private seed industry now they have purchased it nuzvidu i think they have purchased it maybe another one two three companies they have purchased this video meter no industry i don't know but we have talked directly with the dealer actually there is a story behind it uh, my colleague uh, dr manjunath is there he worked he did his phd in netherlands yeah yeah so because of him we could get it so this one is very useful to have the lot of morphological data and the reflection data then we have studied the dormancy maybe on the top of the paper method for 10 days then after ripening we have kept the seeds for a long period of time in intermittently we have taken that and we have seen the germination and these are the observations we made the morphological data by using the video meter reflectance data by using 19 wavelengths intensity of dormancy what is the intensity of dormancy intensity is the amount of dormancy that is present at that particular time at the time of harvest that is the intensity of the dormancy then depth of dormancy depth of dormancy means the duration how much long it is present in the particular genotype so how we have to estimate the duration there are we cannot keep the seeds for long time and we can say that it is the longest period because it will be varying so for that we have to calculate the dsds50 days of dry seed storage required to achieve 50% germination how to do that i will tell then dormancy index this is also one of the factor this can be estimated based upon the area under the curve area under the germination curves we can get the difference and we can get it and some seed vigor parameters we have taken now depth of the dormancy dsds50 how we have did this dsds50 is we have taken the lots we have germinated them at regular intervals then we have fitted them into a logistic curve and based uh, what is the basis for this logistic curve is ben singh et al he is also a very good person working on the seed uh, aspects from uh, netherlands so they have published a paper in pinas from that we have taken this formula and we have fitted this curve so in general we will think if we don't fit the curve it will be a straight line but if you fit the curve you will know the actual curvature based on this the time taken for 50% of germination means initially dormancy will be there germination will be less here so gradually with the duration of the time germination is increasing at which point 50% germination has achieved that is called as dsds50 by fitting this you can calculate the the m here i have shown that will give you the dsds50 so like this we have calculated the dsds50 which is gives the depth of dormancy then to study the dormancy index we have developed the cumulative germination curves again this by fitting the regression equations by four parameter hill function by developed by l kasabi so based on that once we have fitted these germination curves so this is the germination initial germination this is after last of dormancy this is an not the actual picture this is a for purpose uh, this is from the rice to be frank i have shown uh, here the difference between these two curves that will give the dormancy index so you can know the area of the red one and you can know the area of the blue one so if you deduct it you will get the dotted one that is the dormancy index but for this you have to develop the curves to develop the curves you require daily germination data then what are the things we got is we have seen lot of variation in case of 100 seed weight among these genotypes but compared to less variation in case of length and width similarly area there is a lot of variation perimeter less variation and similarly if you see the eccentricity eccentricity is how much it is away from the circularity that is called as eccentricity so those things and if you see the rectangularity is very less but eccentricity is very high because mung bean is a round type of seed so these are some of the parameters we got find out and similarly for the dormancy characteristics we can see wide variation in these genotypes either iod intensity of dormancy or dsds50 or the dormancy index we have taken the dormancy index at two different points 130 and 175 days at 175 days you can see variation is large then here i want to show one thing we have seen the decrease in the dormancy over a period of time here you can see this is the variation that is present in the population and it has started decreasing with the increase in the period of time then to know that whether the decrease in the dormancy is increasing the vigor or not whether is there any relationship between the loss of dormancy and vigor 
so we have done a germination speed test which is a, nothing but the based upon the accumulated percent we can see a very good correlation this is decreased this is increased we are also very happy then when we have seen that what is this germination speed actually giving it is nothing but it is based upon the germination so whenever the dormancy is losing automatically germination will increase it is not the speed of germination and here i want to tell the students one thing that while choosing the parameters you should be very very careful there are n number of parameters are there like in the, in the terms of vigor which one you have to choose most of the things are linked ones like seed vigor index we will say always seed vigor index will be having a very good positive correlation with your germination because it is having one of its component the seed vigor index is nothing but germination into seedling length so if you are including that only as and you are comparing it as a very good positive correlation is there my vigor is good no that is giving a wrong thing so you have to see even you cannot do the correlation when there is a linkage between those two so this is a false thing it is giving a false indication so what we should do is we have done with t50 what the t50 will give time for achieving the 50% germination so again you have you cannot say directly curve again you have to fit a curve germination curve you have to take it as here i have shown here like in the germination curve you have to see where it has been fitted and you will get the value so t50 we have seen and another term is also there mean germination time mean germination time mostly our uh, uh, alison powell they are mostly promoting the mean germination time but still mean germination time is having certain lacuna what is the lacuna in case of mean germination time what mean germination time tells what is the total germination is there what is the mean of that germination suppose you are having two values like 40 and 60 the mean will be 50 if you are having 70 and 30 mean will be 50 if you are having 80 and 20 mean will be 50 so it is taking only the mean germination but actually there is a lot of variation will be there it could not able to capture it so for that you require a constant one for 50% germination how much is required then you will get the variation so t50 is the most idealistic even you can see the latest uh, maybe last year two three years back fiana has have given uh, one of the wonderful writing about this where she has emphasized the importance of the t50 for vigor estimation rather than the mgt so the t50 will give a clear picture if we see the t50 clearly there is no correlation at all t50 is very much fluctuating that means when the seed is losing the dormancy it is not having any increase in the vigor so there is no relation between these two but whether it is same for all the species that we don't know we have to study at least for mung bean we can say that it is not there based upon the study then we have made some correlation studies for the morphological characteristics and the hard seed of course we all know that the small seeds will be having very good hardness but when the morphological studies have been made the hs are hard seeded at 45 days hs hard seeds at 80 days 130 days 175 days different durations you can see these are having no correlation at all or the green color is coming here almost zero or slight negative correlation and except these which are having the ratio of width and length ratio of width and area are having mild positive correlation so most of these characteristics are not having any correlation with the dsds 50 or loss of dormancy except the rectangularity rectangularity is having a correlation over the things so rectangularity is an important thing in case of mung bean which is a round seeded one so the seeds which are rectangular in case of mung bean they are having some good correlation with the hard seededness then if you see the color bands similarly color bands almost green that is means slight negative correlation because it's not very strong if it is very strong it should be fluorescent green but the first five bands are giving some significant correlation even though it is very low correlation there are two things in correlation we have to remember one is significant correlation another one is the intensity of the correlation we may get significant but maybe intensity will be less we may get very high correlation but it may not be significant so both the things are required then only the correlation will be proper correlation here mild correlation was there but some 
significant correlation has been found. Then what we did is we made the genome-wide association studies for this because we are already having the genotypic data. Now we have done the phenotypic data. So we made the GWAS, genome-wide association studies. We used the GAPIT software. We used the CMLM model, that is compression mixed linear model we have used. And what we can found is here, this is called as Manhattan plot. Here you can see some points will be there. These are nothing but SNPs, SNPs, SNP markers. So here you can see initially all will be linked, linked, linked. But where this association is very tightly, then it will be pointing. So here you can see the, the higher the point will be, better is the association. So we can find several market trait associations. So several SNPs have been found to be associated with the dormancy index with 130 days, 175 days, DSDS 50 and IOD. And we have noted down what are those SNPs. But now the problem or the thing is we have to see what this SNP, where this SNP is present in the genome. Whether it is present very close to the, here one more thing we have to see is linkage disequilibrium. So linkage, linkage equilibrium, we know that there will be linked, both will be going. But even without linkage, if two characteristics are passing on through the generations, that is linkage disequilibrium. So we have to calculate that linkage disequilibrium and in that LD block, we have to see what are the genes that are present. That means along with that SNP, those characteristics are moving on. So these studies we are yet to make. So we are hopeful that we will get some good SNPs or some novel SNPs. Similarly, with the color bands also, we got very good association. So what are those associations? We have to, for that, we require the actual genome, the completely sequenced genome of the moonbeam. By luck, we are having that. So we can use that and we can do that. So this is all about the moonbeam, the studies we have made. Now, maybe I'm crossing the time, but a few slides. Um, in case of rice, in case of rice, Whenever you will keep it as germination, you will get two things, ungerminated seeds. Either it is hard seed or another one is fresh ungerminated seed. So hard seed part we have seen, the fresh ungerminated part. In case of rice, there are no hard seeds. So it is fresh ungerminated seed if it is not germinating. So similarly, in case of mung bean, here also we have taken 218 rice genotypes. So there is a 3K RGP panel is there. That is 3000 rice genome have been sequenced completely by the IRRI and that entire genomic data they have kept in the website that is available freely. So if you are having the genotypes, then you can phenotype and you can do the marker trait association. So we have taken that 218 genotypes and again we have collected germinated a specific period of time after ripening we did similar to that of the mung bean. And finally we have calculated here intensity of the dormancy DS, DS50 and dormancy index so this is the variation i am not going to that here what we got is here we got very some you compared to that of the mung bean here you can see there is a continuous growth is there such kind of snips are very very tightly associated snips so that will give some good information or good things so once we have seen that these markers in case of ds ds 50 here ds ds 50 you can see it is going above 6 above 7 means this is a negative log 10 value. So to avoid the false associations, because whenever you are dealing with so much huge data and each association you are doing and comparing it, there is a chance of getting a lot of false associations. So whenever you are having a continuous data with very high, that will give a very positive association instead of a false association. So based on that, we have developed, this is the LD block. So this is the complete LD block of that. And that we have chosen this particular part. Here, the SNP is present and we have find, uh, magnified it. So this is the region that SNP is present. And in this region, you can see around seven genes are present. So in that LD block, seven genes are present, out of which two, three genes are very, very interesting. That is one is universal stress protein. So stress proteins, because dormancy, germination, these are all a kind of stress plant has to face that kind of stress. So it is a very good sign. We have to see its biological thing. Another one is the brachnosteroid insensitive associated receptor kinase. 
So in rice, we are getting this brachiosteroid insulin star receptor because it is a role in cold stratification and release of the dormancy, and it is having the repression of the ABA signaling. So it is also direct linkage is there. So we have to see. So this is up to here. This is one thing. Next thing is very big task. We can do the association mapping. We can find the association. We can find the novel genes. Now we have to prove that. To prove that, we have to do either go for RT-PCR or we have to go for CRISPR-Cas. We have to identify. We have to see a identical thing with a difference in this particular gene, and we have to see that our trait is behaving differentially in that. So those studies we have to make. So with this, I am uh, ending the lecture. And what is the take-home message is seed dormancy is very very important ecologically, and it is having lot of impact on seed quality from the seed technology point of view on production, storage, and testing. And dormancy is a necessary evil, just like what we say for the transpiration. You cannot get rid of it, but it is useful. If you don't to have it, you are having pre-harvest sprouting. If you have it, you are having so many problems. So via media, you have to be having a balanced system. You should have a dormancy such that it should not be prolonged. It should not be deep. It should be non-deep type we are having. Then it will be a good thing. Then understanding the different types and mechanisms of dormancy induction release is essential for designing proper dormancy breaking treatments. Next one is physical dormancy regulation is still a mystery. There are a lot of questions to be answered. Daily new things are being unraveled. So this is one of the interesting area to study further. Then genomic studies helps in identifying the novel regulatory mechanisms, like what we are finding the brachiosteroids are playing a role, and PPR proteins, which are having a direct linkage on controlling the ABA, and particularly during germination they will be activated. So this is miRNA proteins. So these things are having lot of role. So we will find new mechanisms that are controlling the a complex phenomenon of dormancy. so which has to be done with this i want to thank all of you for your kind listening our kind patience and i want to thank the tnu authorities for giving me this opportunity to come over here and to especially to dr v manan mani madam because she is in constant touch with me and she made my travel journey coming everything very smooth and of course dr ranganayake madam because of which her student i am coming over here then my authorities who have given me the necessary permissions to come over here and of course my colleagues and my teammates and my lab group i have to acknowledge them and with this i want to thank you one and all thank you very much not half an hour madam actually what we did is that is already soaked one it's a hard seed once we have abraded we have make it open up because moonbeam within hours it will start so after opening up after removing the seed coat it is started the radical protrusion has started Okay. Yeah, so the elongation of the radical has started. So we know that it is a, basically it is a hard seed. To know that one, it is a very good instrument. Uh, supposed to be have in all the seed technology divisions, but because of its cost and it is is not a possible. Uh, we can keep the seeds at a time around forty to fifty seeds. We can keep just before that uh, dome. so the dome will release the wavelengths different wavelengths so one by one it will release and it will calculate the reflectances uh, of individual seed that is the yeah all 50 individual yes we will get the data of all the 50 seeds even the length width all those characteristics also we will get the data of all the 50 seeds so because whenever we are dealing with these seeds or these thing the population we require large samples until unless we do with the large samples we will get the skewed data always so if we do the measurements in few seeds because manually we cannot do 50 seeds for 200 genotypes 50 seeds means it is very very difficult so for that purposes these instruments will be very useful so if you keep it within 5 minutes it will record all the things it will record the wavelengths it will record the uh, morphological characteristics and apart from that this instrument can be used for uh, particularly in seed pathological aspects because it whenever it is reflecting i have not shown the images so it will give a contrasting image at the different wavelengths so there we can see that very thing is damaged part is there any diseased part is there so that we can visually means without any destructive method we can see the things 
and similarly studies are going on whether we can correlate these things with the vigor so without any non destructive method can we keep it and do it so we so, just have to see. no not only imbibed seed we, uh, raw seed if we keep it okay. it will give the things no but different different purposes like what you are saying imbibed seed so that will give some other information so because since we are not having these instruments we cannot do much more experimentation but it is having lot of scope to do many experiments particularly physiological aspects in case of seeds with this instrument so you can understand this one is it is imaging yes imaging it is nothing but an imaging the second one is the reflectance yes that is the wavelength which is passed through the seeds No, it will not go through the seeds. It will fall on the seeds and it will reflect back. Okay. That will be captured. Captured. So that the entire seed surface, that area will be captured. So how that reflectance is, whether it is uniform or either it is having different shades, all those things we will get. Right. Whether it is germinate or not. Yeah. Right. So that work you have done with this instrument. No, we have tried to see the correlation, but we could not get much correlation except the five bands. so now we have uh, made the market rate association we have to see whether it is relating to any dormant genes or not so if it is relating then it will be very useful so we can say that yes this particular wavelength for this particular crop we can identify the dormant seeds easily so that will be so a useful it's going to be instant yes <laughs> thank you so much yes. actually what i did is i have taken one pod so within that pod individual seed wise i have checked whether it is hard seed or not so then i have sown that seed after knowing the condition because generally what we will do we will take the seeds uh, either we will test the hardness in some seeds and we will use some other seed for sowing so instead of that what i have taken is i have taken the seed first i have checked whether it is hard or not if that is hard then i have gone for a scarification treatment then i have sown it if it is non hard the imbibed seed i have gone for sowing purpose no pot culture i have done in the lab i have screened first checked then the same seeds i have sown in the pots so from each seed i have seen what is the dormancy seeds you have tested and the you sown the hard seeds the next generation how uh, lot of variation lot of variation that's what i am i have shown from a dormant plant we got both because since it is not 100% dormant see both dormant and non dormant seeds are there again this dormant seed i have taken and i have sown from that whenever i have seen the number of hard seeds in the pods it varied from 0 to 100% means some pods are having 100% hard seeds some pods are having no hard seeds at all so there is no correlation at all so that's what we thought since it is a self pollinated crop we assume that it should give some kind of link but it has not given that's why the things that whether what is the role of environment or what are the other things since we are restricted only to the morphological things what are the biochemical things or the molecular things that are happening in physical dormancy which we have not studied yet are causing these reasons the bet hedging strategy by sharma et al that is also very eye opening thing so we have to study that thing also in case of physical dormancy ask anything <laughs> if i know i will answer if i don't know i will say that i don't know yeah please hard seeds uh, in one of the slide i have shown that hard seeds uh, the dormancy or the hardness can be broken by two conditions one is natural another one is artificial artificially either you can go for scarification or you can go for a, any uh, rupture of the seed coat or opening of the uh, water paths then it will be fine water gaps but naturally if you keep it then also the hard seedness will be broken over a period of time that's what we have done the experiment in case of moong bean so we have taken at intermittent times and we have kept it under ambient conditions and again ambient conditions means not lab condition because in the lab ac will be running on more or less the uniformity will be there so what we did is we have kept under a corridor in this closed room closed almira so that it will be exposed to completely to uh, you know ambient conditions so whenever there is a change in the rh and temperature is there what will happen is these the either the water gaps uh, i have not seen there is one paper by baskins um, uh, student only gehan et al i think they have given one wonderful paper about this water gaps different types of water gaps and how it is there so if you go through the paper you will see that 
over a period of time how these will be open up so initially they will be closed but with the changes in the temperature in these things these water gaps will be open up so naturally if you keep it for storage of course your storage conditions will have 100% influence on the opening or breaking of this hard seededness so if your rh is more there are more chances for fast breaking of this hard seededness Yeah. Sir, if we could uh, decipher the genetic basis of this hard seededness or this dormancy, sir, can we engineer any crops so that we could improve the resilience and longevity in the face of environmental challenges? That is the purpose. Already, if you see in case of rice, there are several varieties are there which are uh, resistant to several diseases. So what they did is they have identified the genes first, then they have fine mapped, they have identified the linked markers. once it has been identified marker resisted breeding they did so simply you can go on breeding a fast method of breed so here also if you can identify particular gene which is having large influence and fine map it and we can identify the markers linked markers so certainly we can transfer this trait suppose we are having a very good variety which is not having any dormancy so we can transfer it but here one thing to be remembered is how much dormancy we require and the gene which we are transferring it is not a resistant gene here we require a limited dormancy so whether that gene which we are transferring is having a very high dormancy level or a moderate dormancy those things also has to be considered so it is little bit tricky thing rather than simple pathogen whether there is a seed for thickness they have you studied it i have not studied the seed for thickness uh, initially we have made there was some difference was there in case of uh, dormant and non dormant group when we have compared so thickness of the dormant group is little bit higher seed coat thickness is certainly having a role certainly having a role in increasing the dormancy level because it is the first barrier to environment the connection between the environment and embryo it is the barrier so once that barrier breaks then only the embryo can contact the environment so seed coat thickness is having a role sir good afternoon from where i okay, am online there is in uh, i am dr masila mani from uh, sugarcane research station sirigamani ha uh, sir good morning uh, good afternoon uh, that is you are giving a excellent lecture uh, but previously we thought that uh, in physical dormancy only in seed coat now only you are giving lot of information regarding chemical and uh, solus some qtl also uh, some of the gene also responsible for the physical dormancy sir in that uh, pod germination you are telling that is a lot of uh, research you are doing uh, yes. in that pod also uh, you are uh, individual seeds uh, you are uh, taking for uh, dormant and non dormant seeds any possibilities for qtl mapping for that uh, those seeds if anything any possibility for uh, those things genetically individual seeds hmm within the pod you are saying that uh, i could not get your question so the individual pod you are telling that uh, within the pod uh, mm -hmm. you are having the, uh, the number of seeds some yes. of the seed is having uh, dormant right. that dormant seeds you are uh, breaking it and uh, put for germination in pod culture at that time you are not getting uh, clear cut results again the those plant it giving seeds is having dormant and non dormant you can't uh, clearly uh, we cannot conclude at that in that seeds you may go for any genetic uh, that is in qtl mapping and other things no is actually any... no actually the thing hmm. is that here it is a uh, self pollinated crop since the pollen is also okay. from the same plant and uh, it is forming in the same ovary so the variation okay. will be very very less so okay, okay. it is expected that if it is a dormant means it should form the dormant seeds but here we could not find any such relationship so then we are thinking that not only the genes but maybe some of the environmental factors that are affecting which are infuse inducing this dormancy which is and another one technique i told that that wet hedging technique so that could also be playing a role uh, we have to see the epigenetic role also whether individual seed wide there is a difference in the dormancy levels 
whether there is a, any epigenetic differences are there or whether the individual seeds are experiencing different moisture conditions so we have to devise a technique so that we can see the moisture level of each and individual seed that to non restrictive method then only we can come out of these things studies much better way